Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back students so we are now close to the end of the first part of this course mechanical behavior of materials and to end this we will introduce you to some fundamental mechanical properties of composites and we'll continue our uh, understanding about the composites in the next part which is part 2 of mechanical behavior of materials so let's begin so what is a composite basically composite is a material which is consisting of two or more distinct phases and which are suitable suitably arranged or distributed so the other and in this as you would see one phase becomes the matrix phase which is larger in fraction and the other phase becomes the reinforcing phase and the reinforcing phase can be distributed in either random manner or in some uh, particular fashion so let's uh, put it in words material consisting of two or more distinct phases and the two phases are usually termed as matrix and reinforcement but why do we make a composite why do we want to combine two or more materials it is to improve certain properties and but mostly me mechanical properties so the idea of making a composite is to get the good properties from the two different materials and combine them in a way that you can get the best of both the worlds now the question is when we are saying two or more distinct phases one question is can we also call aluminum alloys where precipitate can be are is a distinct phase as a composite and the answer is no in uh, like i said one of the primary motivation of composites is to improve mechanical properties and one of these properties that changes distinctly is elastic modulus so for uh, as a general rule of thumb you can say that a, a system would be called a composite only when it has sufficiently different elastic modulus so in the, in the case of aluminum alloys you would see that pure aluminum versus aluminum alloy does not have very different elastic modulus and therefore we cannot term it as a composite so what will be the overall um, characteristics or properties of the composite dependent on so characteristics of course the two phases so what are the two phases the two phases are matrix and the reinforcement but also not only these two but also the interface between the two so this part we will not talk much about in this uh, particular lecture you will see when we talk uh, about toughening that at that point you would see the importance of interface so in general in the conventional sense composite material consists of two phases where it is a, there is a primary phase and a secondary phase and the primary phase forms the matrix phase and the secondary phase is embedded inside it and depending upon what is the material of the matrix or the primary phase we can overall have three different classes of composites and 
there will be metal matrix ceramic matrix and polymer matrix in fact these are the three main classes of materials and therefore we can also draw a venn diagram to describe the different types of composites you will obtain so one of them is metals ceramics and polymers so you can have polymer matrix where you can have the reinforcement phases as ceramic and metals or you can have ceramic matrix where you can have reinforcement phases as polymer and metals and you or you can have metal matrix where you can have polymer or ceramics as reinforcement but this is uh, not the only, not all you can also have metal matrix with metal reinforcement you can have polymer matrix with polymer reinforcement theoretically i mean not all of them would be meaningful as you would see in the next table but it is possible and similarly you can have ceramic matrix with ceramic reinforcement so depending so based on that we can describe the overall matrix of composites like this where you have primary phases here metal ceramic polymer and secondary phases as metal ceramic and polymer so you can have combination of metal matrix metal reinforcement so for example powder metal parts infiltrated with a second metal or you can have a ceramic metal cer sorry ceramic matrix with metal reinforcement but this is very rare because the overall characteristics of ceramics is brittle and therefore if you use it as a matrix then the component will be brittle in nature and therefore it is not common and there may be very exceptional examples for this and uh, other possibilities of having polymer matrix and metal reinforcement and so on and as you can see combination with ceramic matrix is very rare because i said as i said ceramic matrix or ceramic in itself is brittle so having them as uh, matrix would would cause the brittleness to remain in the material and therefore it will have a tendency to fall or to uh, fail but then there are also something as ceramic matrix and ceramic reinforcement and this is particularly done to improve the toughness of ceramics so this kind this is also something that you would get to see in the next part or part 2 of this course metal matrix is one of the most common ones now let's uh, also look at other than these three there are there is also a possibility of having something like carbon carbon composites so example would be carbon fibers in graphite matrix and these are also these are one of the highest strength materials which are used in some very difficult application like uh, brakes for aeroplane and so on used in the noses of the wings of the airplane so used in nose meaning the part which is in the front which uh, undergoes highest uh, which experiences highest heat and stress of the wings brake plates of airplane and the characteristics of uh, such composites are very high temperature resistance and wear resistance so as long as the tough impact is low 
then it has good toughness. But at very high impacts, they don't have good toughness. So there are limitations apart from these some very good characteristics. So this is a classification of composites based on what are the type of material being used. But there is also possible, uh, you can also describe the composites in terms of based on distribution of reinforcement. So what do we mean by distribution of reinforcement? So for example, if you have very small type of re, uh, reinforcements, then they would be discontinuous. So you can have discontinuous reinforcements or if they are very long, then it will be continuous throughout the matrix from an end to another end, most you know, very long. So this is another classification of composites. Then you can also have composites, types of composites based on the type of reinforcement. So this is on the distribution. Now what we will define is on type of reinforcement. So for example, you can have a composite where you have particle distributed all over it. So these are particle reinforced composites or you can have continuous fibers. So the fibers may run from one end to the other end. So this would be a continuous fiber reinforcement. And you can also have very short fibers or whiskers. The whiskers, you cannot have very long whiskers. So they would always be very small in size. And they can also cause, can also be used for reinforcements. Now in this context, you would see later on that orientation of these reinforcement phases will also be important. So this is short fiber with or whisker reinforced. And lastly, one very different class of uh, Composite is when you have laminates. So this is something that you would have seen in ply boards that are used for making furnitures. So different types of furnitures that may be at your home. If you look closely, some of these are made by ply boards and these ply boards are like laminates. So you can also have, you will also have different type of materials apart from ply boards, but this is one very commonly found material. So this one would be named as particle reinforced composites. This would be continuous fiber composites. This would be short fiber or whisker reinforced composites. And this is laminated, laminate composites. So this is the overall classification of the 
composites now let's look at what will be the role or what are the what is the expected contribution from the in from these uh, matrix phases and the reinforcement phases role of matrix phase and that and based on this you would see why we don't use so many ceramic matrix composites so the purpose of the matrix phase one of the primary purpose is to provide the bulk form now if the bulk form is from the ceramic then of course it will have lot uh, it being brittle in nature will also impart that brittle to the component the purpose of uh, matrix is also to hold and protect the reinforcing phases so because the reinforcing phases are embedded inside it so the matrix the, is also supposed to protect that reinforcing phases hold and protect share the load with the reinforcing phase so this is now coming to the characteristics why we are actually making the composite in the first place because we want it to improve the we want to improve the overall mechanical characteristics and in that sense when you are putting the load we want the reinforcing phase to carry the load that way you will be able to carry higher load with the inclusion of these reinforcing phases so share the load now you can see the word share so a part of the load will go to the reinforcing phase and when you do any deformation then the mid matrix is supposed to also take a little bit of strain so that the load can be effectively transferred to the reinforcing phase so deform partly for effective load transfer now uh let's look at these are the role or the purpose of a matrix in a composite now let's look at what are the roles that the reinforcing phase is supposed to play so like we said that we put the reinforcing phase primarily for the mechanical strengthening and therefore the primary purpose of the reinforcing phase is to provide reinforcement as the name also suggests we Re provide reinforcement by carrying the bulk of the load and when whenever we put in the secondary phase or the reinforcing phase we expect that it bonds well with the matrix if it does not bond well then it will not be able to carry the load so the other secondary role of the reinforcing phase is to ensure good bonding with the matrix
So overall, the roles of the metrics and reinforcing phases are clearly understood. And accordingly, we include the material for either the matrix phase or the reinforcing phase. So for example, if we are using uh, for the matrix, if we are using metal, then we know that metals are one of the most versatile engineering materials with very good strength, ductility, and impact strength. So that's why we can use, so if you want to utilize those properties, then we would use metal as the matrix. But then the drawback of uh, metals is that they are very heavy in the sense they are very high density. So the one of the purpose of adding the reinforcement phase would be to reduce the weight, in which case you would include something like polymer or a lightweight metal, which will result in improved specific strength. So if it is a metal, then we know that metals have very good strength and the ring, but it is also high in density. So the purpose of uh, secondary phase can be to reduce uh, or to improve specific strength. Objective for adding uh, using metal matrix and using a second secondary phase is also to increase E or more precisely E by rho. And in some application, you may have to increase E by rho square or sometimes E by rho q. And uh, that depends upon this application and what are the primary objectives of uh, primary objective or the primary mechanical characteristics of the component that is being used over there. So if the primary characteristics is such that E by rho is to be optimized, then you will increase the E by rho or for some material it can be for some component or some application it can be E by rho square or it can be E by rho q. Now let's look at the other option for matrix material. Which can be ceramic or glasses. Like we said that ceramic or glasses are very brittle in nature. And because of that, it is very less common to use ceramic as the matrix phase. So less common. But still some places you may find use of ceramic matrix and that would be because they are very good insulators. And also very chemically inert. So in some cases where you want to use the material where you want to have good insulation or you want to use it in a chemically active environment, then ceramic matrix composites would become a good choice. And you will have to strengthen it with secondary phase, which will improve its toughness because we know the weakness of the composite is toughness. So the secondary phase would be used in a way that it improves the toughness.
the third possibility is polymers the good qualities of polymers are good ductility insulating properties but on the other hand they have low strength and creep resistance so the purpose of uh, reinforcement in such composites would be to improve these properties so for example you can think of uh, the lights that we use for diwali nowadays the wire that you have over there the polymer is providing the insulation and inside the aluminum alloy or what aluminum wire that is providing the current now here here the reinforcement is the aluminum or the copper wire whatever is being used for the conductivity while polymer is the being used for insulation and at the same time it is also providing the ductility during the formation and the load is being actually taken by also by the polymer so it in that way you are able to reduce the overall amount of aluminum or copper that you have to use and thereby you reduce the cost if you look at the older type of wires which were used you would see that the aluminum or the copper they were much thicker because over there the purpose was not only conductivity of the aluminum and copper but also to provide the overall strength but nowadays you uh, to reduce the cost manufacturing has been optimized so that polymer is is the primary load carrying component over there now polymers have also low density and hence uh, this can also be used as reinforcement for the purpose of light weighting but then that would be when you are using polymers as a reinforcement but as a when the polymer is itself the matrix then you don't need to add any more polymer to light weight it's already very light weight now let's look at the reinforcing phase so the reinforcing phase we can have different types of materials and the reinforcing four phases as we have seen can exist in various forms so what are those various forms some of these we have already seen like fibers long strands with circular or non circular cross sections but con but constant cross sections we should say and where the diameters can range from few microns to fraction of millimeter so you can have fibers like this or you can have particles particulate shaped again ranging from few microns to fraction of millimeter or you can have flakes two dimensional particles like platelets so they can also serve as reinforcing phase or you can have infiltrated phases so for example the primary phase may have lot of porosity and the secondary phase can infiltrate so when the secondary phase acts like a filler in the matrix then it is a infiltrated phase and this is usually found in powder metallurgy fibers are usually tubular or rectangular or it can sometimes also be hexagonal but the important thing is that usually they will have constant cross section and fibers can bear the majority of the load so they act as a very good you can say load share uh, load sharing component in the composite filament structure of fibers are mostly defect free if you look at uh, very thin metals they are usually dislocation or free also which are called viscous and similarly the fibers are also mostly defect free and hence they have very very high strength 
and that is why they can be used as reinforcement. Now you can have it as continuous or it can also be discontinuous. So you can have very long fibers or you can have very small fibers. And then thickness can also vary. If the thickness is very small, you can have something like whiskers, which is which can have diameter as small as one micron. On the other hand, you can have very thick fibers, which will not be whiskers, but they can still provide good re, uh, reinforcement. Fiber reinforcement is also an important parameter in determining the overall strength of the material. So now whatever you are using, like uh, the, if you are using the fibers, then the length, the diameter, everything actually makes a difference to the overall properties. So here is an example. If you change the fiber diameter, if you keep increasing the fiber diameter, then what happens to the overall strength of the material of the composite? you see that the strength actually reduces. So this is schematic is showing that strength will reduce as the diameter of the fiber increases. And that is because as the diameter of the fiber increases, it becomes more uh, prone to having defects. On the other hand, if it is very small uh, or very fine diameter, then it will not have too many uh, defects. And in that case, they will, the fiber themselves will have very high strength and therefore it will also be able to carry much higher load. So this uh, is the tensile strength of the fibers, not the composite. So this is the tensile strength of the fibers and you can see that as the diameter increases, it is reducing, it is becoming more and more prone to having defects. This is one, one thing. Another factor that affects the strength is how the fibers are oriented. So for example, here it is long continuous fiber, here it is fibers oriented along two different directions, or in this case, it is very small fiber. So the length of the fiber is one thing that will make a difference. And second is in the case of small fibers, how they are oriented. So are they oriented randomly or they, if you are applying the load like this, so how close are the uh, small fibers with respect to the loading direction? And that is explained in this figure. So here is the elastic modulus on the y-axis and here is the fiber angle. So on an average, if all the fibers are along the direction of loading, then you can see the elastic modulus is very high. But if the fibers are oriented away and further and further away from the direction of loading direction. <coughs> Sorry, you can see that the elastic modulus of the composite decreases. So this is showing the elastic modulus of the composite. And this is showing the effect of fiber orientation. Articulates of metals and ceramics can also be used as reinforcing phase. For example, you may have uh, seen or you may have heard of sarmets. So sarmets is coming from ceramics and metals. So here metal is the matrix and ceramic Particulates are added into the metal matrix and the purpose is to improve wear resistance. So metals are very good, have very good strength, very good toughness, but ceramics are much better, have much better wear resistance. And therefore, when you add ceramics into metal matrix, you can get very good toughness as well as very good wear resistance. Distribution of particles that we have already seen on in the case of fiber, but it is also true for particles, whether it is randomly distributed or homogeneously distributed, that will determine the overall properties of the composite. 
so if it is homogeneously distributed one thing you can be you can expect is that the properties would be isotropic in nature strengthening also depends on particle size so small particles cause the strengthening by dispersion hardening and improving the load carrying capacity of matrix on the other hand larger particles share the load with the matrix and proper bonding is very important in the case of larger particles and they are able to transfer the load from the matrix to the reinforcing phase so the overall role of the reinforcing phase remains same but then how they if the mechanism changes whether it is a small particle small in the case of small particles it will improve the strength by dispersion hardening and in the case of very large particles it will improve the load by sharing the load with the matrix now what uh, now we will move on to the strengthening mechanisms in the composite so there are two different two broad mechanisms of strengthening so we have already looked at it uh, in a in a very broad way now we will look at it in a more specific way so there is direct strengthening and then there is indirect strengthening so direct strengthening is what we already know is the when that there is a load transfer due to load transfer from matrix to fiber so here is a schematic which explains so in the uh, so the, let's say this is the fiber and this the rest of it is matrix and the lines are just shown as isostress condition so initially when you are uh, it is unstressed then of course every point is at zero stress and all of them are showing zero stress but when you apply a stress like the, in the directions shown over here then there is isostress line this here over here and you see now because of the presence of this particle or the fiber the stress stresses are stress contours have changed and this is how the stress contours look like and this is because the small amount of or not actually not a small amount but a very large amount of load is being now carrying carried by this fiber and therefore the stress contour looks something like this so this is what will be called as direct strengthening where there is difference in local displacement which leads to shear stress at the interface so there is a difference in the local displacement from this point to this point and this will also lead to shear interface the shear stresses at the interface and that is where we said that bonding between the fiber and the matrix must be very good now let's look at what is indirect strengthening so this happens when there is a change in the matrix microstructure and properties due to addition of reinforcement so this is strengthening is happening happening via the microstructure so first there is change in the matrix microstructure and hence the properties due to reinforcement this can be explained uh, via two different routes so one case 
uh, or two e examples. So let's say in one case, your matrix has higher CTE or coefficient of thermal expansion. And reinforcement has lower CT. Now, if you heat the, this kind of material, then what will happen? What will happen is that there will be stresses generated near the interface. And because of those stresses, dislocation would get generated at the interface. Stresses and hence dislocations generated at interface. So you can see that now you have dislocation and we remember when there is dislocation, density increases, then there is a strengthening. So this is dislocation interaction strengthening, or you can say strain hardening because there is now strain in the region and that leads to strengthening in the composite. The other application or the other example that you can think of is what will happen to the grain sizes compared to the unreinforced matrix? And you would realize that the grain sizes would also re reduce and this would lead to grain size strengthening. And uh, if you look in the literature, you can find that if you have a matrix and if you put a fiber, something like this. So let's say this is the fiber and rest of it is matrix. Then people have shown that if you do uh, etching, which shows the dislocation near this region, then you would clearly see that there are much larger density of dislocation near this. So this is one thing. The other, if you look through literature of metal matrix composites, you would see that if there are particles that are formed somewhere, then because there are particles generated near, because there is particle, there will be stress in the region and therefore new grains form. And you can clearly see small grains near these are called particulate, part, particle simulated nucleation. And away from it, you would see the grains are what you had originally. So this is again grains. So this is the example of the first one where dislocation density has increased. And this is the example for the second one where a strengthening has taken place because of grain refinement. So we will uh, look at another uh, aspect of composite, which is the elastic properties of composite in the last part of this lecture. So let's move on to elastic properties of the composites. So now we know that in the matrix you have the matrix sorry in the composite you have the matrix as well as the reinforcement so one thing that we can clearly write is that the mass of the composite would be equal to mass of the matrix plus mass of the reinforcement
now when we come to volume so matrix and reinforcement are of course there but then along with that there may also be some defects or voids so you also have to take the volume of those voids so that will form the total volume of the composite of course voids don't have mass and that's why it's not added in the previous equation now based on this we can say that the density of the composite is equal to mc by vc which is equal to mm plus mr by vc where vc also includes voids and in terms of the density of the matrix and density of the reinforcement we can write mass of the matrix and mass of the reinforcement in this form mm rho m vm and mr equal to rho r vr and therefore when you put it in the equation over here uh, so in, here you replace mm by this equation and mr by this equation and we know vm by vr vm by sorry vm by vc would be termed as fm which is here and vr by vc would be termed as fr which is fraction of the reinforcement and fraction of the matrix then the overall equation would form like this and this gives you the rule of mixture for density you don't have to individually weigh the mass of the matrix and the mass of the reinforcement you just need to know the fraction the mass fraction and the reinforcement fraction and if you know that and you know the density of the matrix and the density of the reinforcement you can obtain the density of the composite and here we have to keep in mind that vc also includes the volume of the voids in case the volume of the void is negligible then of course this becomes much simpler vm by vm plus vr would be equal to 1 but if there is uh, sufficient amount of void then vm plus vr plus vv will be equal to 1 now coming to the some of the properties of the composite which are the very fundamental properties so now here you have to realize that how we load the composite will determine how the stress is being shared so with that respect yes yeah, this particular arrangement where you have one matrix and the other as the reinforcement if the you need not have the equal fraction of filler it is just for the sake of simplicity that it has been drawn like this but what it is trying to show is that the strain when you apply a load in this uh, in this fashion what will happen is that the load uh, sorry the strain in both the matrix and the reinforcement would be same and which is explained as or written as iso strain model and if you were to write it or to draw it as a resistance model then it would be shown like this where you have sigma being applied to this matrix and the reinforcement where both of them are in parallel so if you apply then both of them will expand equally and therefore strain in the matrix as well as the strain in the uh, reinforcement would be same on the other hand what happens here is that the strain in the matrix and the reinforcement will not be same but but in this case the stress that would be applied because now when you apply a stress it is same throughout from here to here and therefore the stress that is being applied to the matrix and the reinforcement is same and therefore it is termed as iso stress model and it can also be represented like this so here this is spring spring represents matrix and this is spring represents reinforcement and uh, based on this we can have two extreme models for calculating the elastic modulus of the composite so when there is continuity in strain the model can be treated as set of spring in parallel arrangement and 
what you can see is that here EC would be equal to the rule of uh, mixture FM EM plus FR ER. It is also termed as rule of mixture as the modulus is proportional to the volume fraction of each phase. And as we'll show later that this forms the upper bound that your modulus of the composite cannot be higher than this. We will not show this, but we will will not derive this, but we'll show it with in a schematic what it means by saying upper mod, upper, sorry, upper bound. So it is a good measure or method for measuring the elastic modulus when along the direction of fibers. So this is the fiber here, it has been shown as laminates, but you could also have fibers running along this direction. So if that were the orientation, then this would be a good approximation to find the modulus of the composite. So this is also called as white model. The other one, which is the isostress model is also called as reuse model. And when the modulus is to be measured, when the strain is not expected to be uniform, as you can see in this particular case, uh, but stress is supposed to be constant, then one can treat this model as a series. And very easily you can show that EC, I will put a prime here to show that it is perpendicular and different from the one other one. If the EC would be given by Okay, so I just noticed that I have written it as EF, it should be ER actually, reinforcement. So there's a matrix and there's a reinforcement, there's a matrix and there's a reinforcement. So this would give you the elastic modulus when the load is being applied perpendicular to the orientation of the fibers. In this case, what we get is actually the lower bound, meaning the elastic modulus can never be below this for a composite. So if you know the elastic modulus of the matrix and the reinforcement phase and their matrix fraction and the reinforcement volume fraction, then your composite elastic modulus cannot be lower than this value. value. And this part is very neatly summed up in this figure. So here is the rule of mixture. So let's say this is on the Y axis, you have elastic modulus and on the X axis, you have volume fraction of reinforcement, which means one minus matrix, assuming that there is no void uh, volume fraction, or if it is volume, if the void is also there, then this will become one minus VM minus VV. So here the reinforcement phase is increasing and this is the elastic modulus of the reinforcement. And as you would expect that reinforcement will have higher elastic modulus, that is the purpose of the reinforcement and the module matrix has the lower elastic modulus. And if you have the parallel configuration, which is called the void model, then you get a rule of mixture, a straight line like this. And if they are, if the load is being applied in the perpendicular direction. So here it is the schematic. So this is the reinforcement. If you allow, apply along these lines, then it is the void model. And when you apply a perpendicular to the reinforcement, this is called reuse model and it is over here. So this gives you the upper bound. And this gives you the lower bound. So what this uh, figure is telling you is that if the volume fraction of uh, the reinforcement is, let's say somewhere over here, then the elastic modulus would lie in this region. So this would be the lowest value, this would be the highest value. That is the meaning of lower bound and upper bound, uh, depending on how the reinforcements are distributed. So no matter how it is distributed, it will never go beyond this. And uh, no matter how it is distributed, it will never go below this. 
and in in that sense this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound and uh, this is giving you the orientation so if it is completely continuous uh, reinforcement fibers something like this and you are applying the load like this then this is your ec which would be the white model meaning parallel so this is iso strain condition the strain in the fiber is same as the strain in the matrix and if you are applying load like this meaning the fibers are perpendicular to this then this this would be a iso stress condition and it would be more like the series condition and the stress is constant constant not the strain and in that case this would be the value so these are the values for extreme these two extreme condition and other condition could be you have smaller fibers and they are oriented in various directions and so on so no matter what it would be in between these two so that completes our understanding a uh, fun basic understanding or introduction of composites and uh, in the this also completes our mechanical behavior of materials part 1 course so thank you and the next part would con consist of uh, primarily fracture fatigue and creep which will also deal with uh, composites and ceramics so for next level of uh, mechanical behavior of materials or the second part of this please register for that course thank you